Welcome, my friend. In today's episode, we're going to talk about PDO threads for hair growth. Yes, this is a new invention where PDO threads are not just being used for facelifts as in the past, but also to help your hair. So stay tuned. I'm really excited to have Dr. Alan Bauman on the show today. He's one of the world's top hair loss experts as well as hair transplant surgeons. I visited his clinic in Boca Raton, Florida. Of course, this was before COVID-19. And he was gracious enough to share some of the latest and greatest techniques that he's using to not only stop hair loss, but also get better hair for his clients. And PDO Threads or PDO Grow is a technique that he's using specifically to get better hair for his clients. And he's going to explain all of that in just a few moments. The show notes for this episode can be found at antiaginghacks.net forward slash PDO. Dr. Bauman, thank you for coming in the Anti-Aging Hacks show. Now you have a very successful hair practice in Boca Raton, Florida, and you've been doing hair loss for a long, long time. Today, I want to ask you all about this new technique you've been using called PDO Threads or PDO Grow. How did you learn about it and what success are you having with it? So PDO is probably the most exciting thing that we've seen in the practice in years. I would consider it like a PRP 2.0 procedure. So this is something that takes PRP to the next level. And it really came about almost serendipitously. I didn't really know anything about polydioxinone, that's what PDO is, except for the fact that when I was in a surgical residency program, we used these deep stitches, usually they were purple material, uh, deep in the body that were very slow absorbing. And that was really all I knew about polydioxinone. Traveling around the world and doing uh, presentations at different aesthetic conferences and cosmetic surgery, plastic surgery conferences, I learned that they were using PDO threads for rejuvenation of skin, usually in the face. Some of them were barbed to give a little bit of a lift, but many of them were just smooth to rejuvenate collagen, stimulate new blood, uh, new blood vessel formation, and to release growth factors. And someone had mentioned to me that in the Far East, they were using these threads in the scalp and having hair growth effects. And so I was highly skeptical. I didn't think it was really working. Um, I did some research, made some phone calls, um, sent out some emails, and I found, a few different, found out a few different things. So first I found in the clinical literature that there were some studies on rats. So everything starts in the mice, right? Of mice and men. So in the mice, they were using these threads and it triggered hair growth. It, it, it um, stimulated the antigen phase of the hair follicle and they did enough of uh, bench work on those sacrificed mice to determine what the impact was. They basically figured out what the, um, uh, the growth factors were that were being upregulated in the gene expression that was happening. And it was actually working either pretty much just as good as minoxidil in the mice. Then we found the uh, physicians in India who were doing it in the scalp and they were showing increases in uh, hair density and hair quality over periods of time. So let's say 12 to 20 weeks, they were showing some nice improvements in hair density. And then approximately six months out, you know, or eight, nine months out, you would see this improvement in hair growth. So with that encouragement, um, we rounded up a few volunteers to be guinea pigs, I mean patients uh, for the practice, and uh, we tried it out. Um, of course, we had the history behind us of PRP. So we kind of knew if this was gonna work, what kind of patients are likely to respond. So that's helpful. And in the clinical trial we did, we treated female hairlines, we treated female crown areas, we treated male pattern hair loss. So we treated a kind of a wide gamut of different uh, patients with different problems in terms of their hair loss. And what we found is that amazing response to the treatment within a very relatively short period of time. So within about 90 days, most of these patients were visibly responding. I mean visibly like you could take a photo and see that it was working. So we were really, really encouraged that this was um, a procedure that as a standalone, that was, remember these, this clinical trial, this pilot study was threads only at that time. And we saw some amazingly powerful hair regrowth very quickly and very visibly and quantitatively measurable in hair mass changes. So pretty exciting. Um, Obviously, we wanted to combine this with our PRP treatments, and so uh, that we, at the day that we released the results of the clinical trial work at the Aesthetic, at the aesthetic uh, South Beach Symposium, um, the Aesthetic Dermatology Show here in, in Miami Beach, early 2019, we completed the uh, clinical trial work. We presented that material in the photos, and we did a live patient who had the PDO process as well as the PRP. And it was amazing to see his results over the past year or so. Um, 
since he's had his results uh, documented. So um, most patients want to know, well, what is PDO and how is it used in the scalp? Um, it's a, as I said before, it's a polydioxinone is a thin, absorbable, slow absorbing material. It's a very thin, fine filament. And we use uh, literally dozens, if not a hundred threads into the scalp. You don't feel them or see them. They're placed under local anesthetic with Pronox or with nitrous oxide delivery. And uh, the procedure is a lunchtime procedure performed in the areas where there's a lot of weak, thin, wispy hair. And the idea is to kick into action this new blood vessel formation and release of growth factors over a period, a long period of time to get the effects on the hair follicle to grow thicker, stronger, longer, healthier hair over time. And that's what we're seeing. Okay, these threads, are they tightening your scalp? Or are they moving your skin or pulling it together by any means? The threads that we use are completely smooth. They're not barbed. So there is no movement of the skin whatsoever. There's no tightening effect that's happening. It's not like the ones that they use on the face that kind of, you know, move the skin and are anchored into different locations or pulling the skin. These are smooth threads. So this is really for just new collagen, new blood vessels and growth factors. So what is the effect of the PDO threads on the hair follicles itself? So the effect of the PDO threads, what we've noticed is that hair follicles that are weak, meaning that they're miniaturized, kind of rebound, they regenerate a bit. So they're gonna grow a thicker, darker, stronger, and longer hair over time. So if a follicle is dead and gone, a PDO process or PDO grow is not going to make a new follicle appear. But sometimes a hair follicle can be so far miniaturized that you can only see it with a microscope, but it's not completely dead and gone. It's like someone who's far down the road, you can't really see him yet until he gets a little bit closer. So do you typically combine PDO grow with PRP every time you do the procedure? So PDO or the PDO grow process, I find is a lot more reliable in terms of the impact it's having on the hair follicle. So I think it, what it's doing is it's turning some of our non-responders or weaker responders into stronger responders from the PRP process. You know, if you look at PRP, just what we've done over the years, um, PDO Grow, which is the PRP plus PDO process, is creating a much stronger response at the level of the scalp. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty exciting stuff. Um, some patients are coming in, they just want the PDO Grow right away, and they don't wanna have the uh, traditional PRP process. And then I would say most of our patients are patients who have had PRP before, who had a substantial improvement and now are looking for something that's kind of like next level, you know, 2.0. What's next? What's better? And that's where, that's where PDO kind of fits in. Mm -hmm. Is there a particular type of hair loss that PDO grow seems to be more effective for? So PDO grow seems to be effective on any follicle that's miniaturizing. So male pattern hair loss as well as female pattern hair loss. Um, we haven't had too many patients yet with traction alopecia have the PDO process, but I would anticipate that it will work very well uh, in traction alopecia patients too. As long as they have enough follicles that can be rejuvenated, that's going to be kind of our litmus test as to what um, we would expect to see with PRP and PDO together, that PDO grow process. What would you say is the response rate to PDO grow for your patients? So we've had amazing response in both our male patients and our female patients who we've used PDO grow on. Um, a lot of that I think has to do with our patient selection. Uh, sometimes it's a bit of luck, you know, in the clinical trial, we had some pretty outstanding responses from the PDO grow process as well as, uh, um, you know, outside of the clinical trial. So the, the main concern really, again, is what are we trying to accomplish in which area? And so a detailed examination to determine, are you a good candidate is what's required. So again, are we looking at some, a lot of hair density that's been de depleted, then maybe more transplants would be the, the right thing to do. If we're looking at an area that has a high degree of miniaturization, but not yet depleted, then let's go PRP, PDO grow, and so forth. Dr. Bauman, how long do results last from a PDO grow procedure? So I have no idea how long PDO grow results are gonna last. There are patients who have had the procedure over a year ago who are still maintaining their hair mass index. Um, but we would expect that because the suture material, the, the polydioxinone is supposed to last in the skin about six to 12 months, that at some point it's gonna diminish. So we're prepared for that. We know the same is true with our PRP process and we are following the same protocols, meaning that we're measuring every 90 days 
how um, the patient is responding. So we're gonna be able to see the areas that peak and then plateau, and if they start to drift down, then that's the time to take action and repeat the procedure, throw in more threads or what have you. How long does the procedure take when the patient's actually in your clinic? PDO Grow takes a lunch hour. So 90 minutes, start to finish. Similar to what we do with our PRP treatments. Okay, seems like there's injections involved with the PRP, and of course there's threads being placed in your scalp. How much does it hurt? Uh, we use local anesthetic to numb the entire scalp, so um, you're not gonna feel it. You're, the only thing you're gonna feel is the first pinch of the first little tiny bit of local anesthetic that goes into the scalp, and we're gonna distract your skin using a little vibration tool, and we're gonna distract your mind by giving you a little bit of laughing gas. So a combination of the nitrous, plus this vibration technique, and the ring block makes for a completely 100% painless placement of the PDO. Seems like a pretty good deal, but which clients are not good candidates for the PDO procedure? I think if you have inappropriate expectations about what the procedure, any procedure is going to provide, then obviously you're not a great candidate for that procedure. So we would talk about what areas are likely to respond to the treatment. If we're talking about PDO grow, similar to PRP and other non-invasives, we're going to be looking for a lot of weak miniaturized hair in that area. If we see that there's an area, perhaps, you know, let's say we're treating a crown area. For most male pattern hair loss patients, there's a variation from the center to the outer edges in density and miniaturization, right? Because the hair is lost from the center outward. So the center is gonna be the most depleted, typically, of density. There's usually a donut-shaped area that has severe degree of miniaturization. And then there may be an outer ring where is yet to be affected by male pattern hair loss. So PRP, PDO, or PDO grow process is going to help mostly maintain that outer area for miniaturization and enhance that, um, that inside donut shaped area, but might not affect that central portion where there's so much depletion that's occurred. So we would have that deep discussion, what's appropriate and what's not to be expected by the treatment. I wanna go back to something you said, which is this is a lunchtime procedure so patients can get this done over the lunch break. Can they actually go back to work on the same day or should they work from home that day? So immediately after the PDO grow procedure, um, your scalp is gonna be rinsed off and, and cleaned. You're not gonna see or feel anything there. If you've had the PRP with the process, then we've done some microneedling. So the scalp will probably look a little bit pink at that time and it's gonna feel quite a bit numb, but there's nothing to prevent you from going back to work to go shopping, to go out for dinner, to even take a shower or go back to the gym if you want to work out. There's nothing, there's no restrictions in terms of activity. Nothing you can really do to hurt yourself other than apply something too hot to an area that's numb and burn yourself. So don't take a super hot scalding shower. Uh, don't use a hot tool like a hair dryer or something uh, that's in a super hot setting on your scalp if it's numb. So. Keep everything cool until the numbness wears off and you're good to go. How safe is this procedure and are there any side effects? So we haven't seen any adverse events in the clinical trial work that we've done thus far. PDO or polydioxinone has been used in millions and millions of surgical procedures for almost 40 years in surgery. And so finding cases that have had some kind of a skin reaction or immune reaction to polydioxinone is few and far between. It's very difficult to find that in the literature and we've searched. Of course, we're on the lookout for that. It is you know, something that is synthetic. So could there be one in a million chance that you could be reactive to it? Certainly possible. If that happens, we can take the threads out. Um, one of the things that we have seen once in a while in all the cases that we've done is sometimes a thread gets extruded from the scalp, so meaning that you would feel it kind of like a piece of stubble. Um, you just pull the thread, it's removed, and no harm, no foul, it's nothing new. Of course, I'm going to advise consumers to come seek your expert guidance, Dr. Bauman, but if they're not able to make it physically to you, how do they go about finding a different practitioner or provider in their state or country? So there are a few other physicians that are doing PDO Grow. What I would recommend is that they look for the PDO Grow trademark, which is the proprietary protocol that we've developed and that we teach to other physicians. So if there's a physician out there that wants to learn how to do PDO, they need to go to pdogrowclass.com and sign up and they'll learn exactly what we do and how we do it and how we're getting these great results with the PDO Grow process. But you need to look for the name PDO Grow if you're a consumer out there. Someone who's just been doing threads, um, 
you know, aesthetically in a cosmetic way for a facial rejuvenation, probably does not have the skill or expertise to diagnose your hair loss problem and could put your hair follicles at risk if they put the threads in the wrong anatomic location. And so you could be putting yourself either in jeopardy for a, a, a bad result or most likely no result. What do you, what do, you do for your hair, Dr. Bauer? Oh, and now it's you a consultation it. about me. So I've been paranoid about my hair for a long time. You know, the, the long story is that um, I watched my dad lose his hair when I was a teenager and I saw that his dad was completely bald and I was always fearful that that was going to happen to me. And I didn't really know anything about the genetics of it. Um, my mom's dad also had some significant hair loss. So, you know, I didn't know what was going to happen. I liked my hair. Um, when I was in medical school, I grew long hair, you know, I was like, you know, I looked just like Slash, you know, I long curly black hair. Uh, ponytail when I was in the hospital wards. Um, obviously later on through my training, internship residency, and then a fellowship in hair transplantation, I learned the things that I needed to do to help protect my hair. Now, some of it is top secret. I could tell you, but I'd have to kill you. But I can tell you that I do use laser light therapy, topical medications, and nutritional supplementation to maintain my hair. Dr. Bauman, how do you do consults with people? So all of my consults are done personally by myself uh, surgical, for surgical consultation. Patients are gonna have about an hour to an hour and a half in the office, and that's gonna be, to be between myself and my assistants doing a complete intake. We're gonna find your medical history, your medical risk factors. We're gonna do some measurements. We're gonna actually look at your scalp under the microscope, take some measurements of some of the more permanent areas if you have enough hair. Uh, and then make an evaluation based on your restoration goals, your current treatments that you may or may not be using, and uh, we'll put together a plan to help keep the hair you have and restore the hair that you've lost. So it's me personally uh, doing all the sur surgical consultations. So. As of the time of the release of this interview, I know Florida is opening up, but do you do virtual consults with people? So we do remote or vi video consults or virtual consultations routinely in the office. And the reason for that is that 50% of our patients do visit us from out of town for procedures and treatments and, and evaluations. So every single day I'm on the video, uh, whether it be Skype or Zoom or FaceTime, talking to patients from all around the world who are struggling with their hair loss situation. Of course, there's a limit to what we can do in the video consult, but many of those patients have already submitted photos of their hair situation. And I might meet up with those patients in locations such as New York or LA or Florida where I'm licensed and get the complete evaluation completed at that time. But many times we can start initially with some non-invasive therapies from that long distance, uh, get some medications or good laser out to them, uh, or meet them in those distant places like New York, for example, and perform their PRP treatments. If they need surgery right now, they're gonna come to Boca. Dr. Bauman, where can people find you online? So the best way to find my practice is online at baumanmedical.com. And in that website, there's hundreds of pages of information. You can watch videos, see interviews, listen to podcasts about the work that we do. You can see before and after photos and videos of results, patients that we worked on. We've treated nearly 30,000 patients and performed over 9,000 procedures since 1997. So there's a lot of information there. I was probably one of the first hair transplant surgeons on YouTube. So there's a lot of information out there on, uh, on the YouTube channel for patients to get a feel for what they can experience here at the 12,000 square foot hair hospital, as we say, right here in downtown Boca Raton. But a lot of patients will follow me on Twitter at Dr. Alan Bauman, Instagram at Dr. Alan Bauman, connect with me on LinkedIn at Alan J. Bauman, um, or find me on Facebook. Dr. Bauman, thank you for letting me visit your clinic and show me some of the cool stuff you're doing. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's been my pleasure.